uh, hello everybody welcome and according to your instructions and your comments we have recorded this video and we are going to listen to ACCA F2 lectures I have uh, researched a lot and I have picked the best lecture of ACCF2 management accounting and this is the first lecture which is introduction to management and we are going to listen it together I'm sure you will enjoy and you will learn a lot from this so welcome to F2 management accounting now before we get into the nitty-gritty of all the different management accounting techniques that are included in this syllabus first we're going to just think about what is management accounting? How is it used within an organization? Okay. So really, for these first couple of sessions, we're going to be looking at the theory around the management accounting process. So to answer our first question then, what is management accounting? Well, management accounting is the process of providing information to management to assist them with the efficient running of the business. Okay. So we'll just note down our definition before we consider it a little bit further. thing we could think about is what kind of information are we talking about? Well, there's all sorts of information which would be provided to management to help them run the business. So it might be sales information, how many units of our product have we sold in the current month? Cost information, how much is it costing us to run the business? And it might also include other information like employee satisfaction surveys, customer satisfaction surveys, and so on. Now, one of the branches of management accounting is cost accounting. Cost accounting specifically focuses on evaluating the overall costs associated with running the business. And while cost accounting is only one part of management accounting, the F2 syllabus does have a heavy focus on this cost accounting. Very good. Before we move away from the question of what is management accounting, we are going to consider it a little bit further by thinking about the differences between management accounting and financial accounting. Mm -hmm. Why do you study each of these two disciplines separately? To help us understand the differences between these two branches of accounting, we're going to look at each in the context of the users of the information, the frequency with which management and financial accounting information is provided, in what way is this information presented to the users, and finally, what might be included in each of the two. So looking at the users first, well, if you've studied a little bit of financial accounting already, you will know that financial accounting concentrates on producing reports which are made available to external users. So perhaps shareholders, potential investors of the company, or perhaps yes. government. Okay. The users of financial accounting information, by and large, are external to the organization. On the flip side, for management accounting information, the users would be internal. Okay. We said management accounting looks at providing information to the management of the organization. It would therefore be internal by nature. In fact, much of the information provided in the, our management accounting process would be considered highly confidential and sensitive information. So it would never be disclosed outside of the organization. What about frequency then? 
Well, generally when we look at our financial accounting information, the focus is on annual reporting. Now I know many companies now either do or must provide perhaps quarterly financial statements. Um, however, traditionally the focus would be on our annual um, income statement and our annual statement of financial position. Our management accounting information will be provided to management with a far greater degree of frequency. So it might be daily, weekly, monthly. monthly. Really, it involves providing information to management whenever they need it. On so our information basis. may be provided on an ad hoc or once-off basis. Exactly. So management require information in order to make one particular decision, that will be captured as part of our management accounting system. Okay. What about our presentation? Well, if you've studied a little bit of financial accounting, you know that for a company's financial statements, which are published for external use, there are very, very strict rules about the format of each of the reports, about what needs to be included in those reports, mm -hmm. and how the different assets and liabilities of the company need to be treated in those reports. So generally speaking then, for our financial accounting information, there are strict rules... And the standards. ...about presentation. All companies must follow these rules when preparing their financial statements. Management accounting information is for internal use. It can be in any format the company chooses to use, whatever works or whatever is the most useful for the management of that particular company. So there's no set format or rules. Now I say there's no set format or rules that must be followed in terms okay. of management accounting information. Um, however, as we move through the syllabus, you will see there are a number of standard best practice pro formas which we will be following. But we're following these pro formas because they are best practice, not because there is a rule which says we must do that. And finally then, if we look at the content of management and financial accounting, financial accounting will be primarily financial information. So the sales figure for the year, expenses for the year, net profit for the year, and so on. Whereas management accounting information is going to be both financial and non-financial and non-financial information yeah we'll see a lot of the financial information that would be provided as part of management accounting so for example the budget for the coming year would be financial information Absolutely. I mentioned other information that might be provided would be customer satisfaction surveys or employee surveys that would be non-financial information. Yeah. Okay, so we've looked at the key differences then between management accounting and financial accounting. And I've repeatedly used the word information and providing information to management within yeah. an organization. Then let's see what let's is information. Let's think about that word for a few minutes. Yes. What is information? information? What is information? And more specifically, we're going to have to consider what is good information. Okay. Now, to understand what information is, what we really need to consider is the distinction between data and information. Okay. Let's have a look at an example. gave you these three numbers, three, two, and five. Does this mean anything to you? 
No. Is this useful to you no, in it's any not. way? No. Well, I suspect the answer is no. Okay. It's just a list of seemingly unrelated numbers. This is our data. Now, what if I told you that three pounds... is a one-way train journey for me to come from my home into work. And two is the number of journeys I need to make per day in order to get in and out of work. And five is the number of work days per week. Not always, but I try and limit it to five. So we have our data, three, two, and five. Now we know a little something about what this data represents. We can turn this data into information. So the information we can now glean from our raw data is that my weekly train fare is three pounds twice a day, five times a week. So 30 pounds. So what we are seeing here is that data is raw, unprocessed information. Yes. Whereas information is data which has been processed into some meaningful format. Yeah, and now yeah. we can use this information to help us make decisions. Exactly. So if I'm doing my weekly or my monthly budget, I know I need to include £30 for train fares. Or perhaps I can use this to try and find a cheaper way of getting in and out of work. Perhaps I could compare it to the bus journey prices. So you see what we're getting at. Data is unprocessed information. Information is something meaningful. We can use information to help us plan for the future and to help us make decisions. Yes. The final thing we want to consider in relation to information is what makes something good information. There's a whole lot of information out there. We only need to look on the internet to see that. So which information is useful in any given situation and which information is just wasting our time? Good information will have a number of characteristics. What and are there is those? an acronym to help you remember these characteristics. Okay, please, please tell us. So we're looking at our qualities of good information. Our acronym is accurate. We're going to go through each of these qu qualities of good information and we're going to consider the following scenario. So let's imagine after I'm finished work today, I walk out of the office and I'm looking for directions to the nearest train station. And I ask someone on the street where is the nearest train station? Can you give me directions, please? Now, they are going to provide me, I hope, with information as to how to find the train station. The first thing I would expect is that the information they provide you me with Can is you accurate. Go a little bit that side? So good information yeah. needs to be correct in order for it to be useful. If the nearest train station is two miles north and they tell me to walk south, then the information they have provided was not useful. The second characteristic of good information is that it needs to be complete. If I ask for directions to the train station and they tell me, oh, it's over there somewhere, that might be correct. It might be accurate information, but it's not going to really help me. I'll start wandering in that direction, get lost again, and have to ask someone else for directions. Good information must also be cost beneficial. Meaning, the 
benefit of the information has to outweigh the cost of obtaining that information. If information is too expensive, then again, we're not going to pay that high price for that information. So if I ask someone on the street for directions to the train station and they say, well, I'll give you directions, but I'm going to charge you £250. Mm. Am I likely to open my wallet and give them £250, even Never. if I do have it on me, which is unlikely? Yes. I would think not. It would be easy for me to obtain that information somewhere else for free. Mm. So we are only going to pay a reasonable price for information. Yes. Good information should also be user focused. Now what we really want to think about here is should the information be detailed or will summarized information be sufficient? If I'm looking for directions to the train station, I probably want the information to be quite detailed. I want that person to tell me exactly where to go every step of the way. Okay. But in the context of management within an organization, there will be many occasions where summary information will be sufficient. Mm. So perhaps they only need to see what the total costs were for the year for each different department. They may not want a line by line breakdown of what has made up that cost. Our next characteristic of good information is that it needs to be relevant. As I mentioned earlier, there's a huge amount of information out there. The information that is provided to the user needs to be relevant to the decision they are making or it okay. needs to be relevant to its purpose. So if I'm looking for directions to the train station and the person that I have asked directions from starts giving me a full history of England, that might be fascinating information, but it's not telling me how to get to the train station. Exactly, yes. Good information must also be authoritative. What does it mean? All this means is that the person providing the information should know what they are talking about. They should have perhaps researched that information before providing it to me. So if I'm asking for directions to the train station, the person providing that information should either have been to the train station before or have some other way of knowing that the information they are providing me with is reliable. Good information must also be timely. So if I'm looking for directions to the train station today, and I've emailed directions by someone in two weeks' time, that's not particularly useful. Exactly. Likewise, within a company, if management need a particular piece of information to make a decision within, a, within, within the boundaries of a deadline, then it needs to be provided to them quite quickly. If yeah. we wait too long to provide that information, they will no longer be able to use it. Finally, Good information should have ease of use. What we are looking at here is the format and the language in which the information is being provided. We might provide excellent, accurate, complete, user-focused information, but if it's written in a foreign language which management aren't going to be able to understand, it is utterly useless. Yeah. And there are qualities of good information.